The time has come to crown a champion. It is the final round of the 2023 PDGA United States Amateur Disc Golf Championships presented by Discraft. Conrad, we are once again back here at this incredible course, the toboggan that has challenged these players for two rounds. A little bit of a different story to coming up for round three though. Uh, the challenge is still there, but it's being complicated by moisture. Not just in the air, but on the ground, so that means it's gonna be on the disc. Let's see how these players manage in these conditions. We have Ryan up by five strokes over the chaser here, Tanner. And Corbin and Danny are also on the card here trying to make a push to make sure they get a podium finish. Hole one, we're coming in at three, uh, par three at 477 feet. You have this long turning hole from left to right. There is no OB to be, to be seen, but you do want to keep it so that your second shot is either close or outside of that bunker. There's a bunker right there to the right of the green. Once you're in there, that is a natural OB stroke. Players want to see how close they can get to the circle without getting into the bunker to try to get a birdie. Amateur Disc Golf Championship presented by Discraft. This is your lead card and the tee time of 2.20. Leading us off, sitting at negative 17 and 114 strokes over the first two rounds, Ryan Mulder. Ryan coming in today with a, a hefty lead, it's actually 16 down uh, overall. Uh, but 10 down round one, six down round two, round three, like we said, moisture in the air. It's going to be projected to be raining throughout the entirety of this round. Turning one over right towards that bunker that you mentioned there on the uh, on the onset of the drone footage. Yeah, and this is the first time that he's seen that bunker. He's been uh, in the circle and out in the open the previous rounds. We saw Tanner on coverage round two for the lead card. Very strong player, both backhand and forehand. Pretty quick player, too. He gets up to his disc, decides what he wants to do, and just goes. Ripping over on a sidearm here. Taking it out wide, not really attacking the green, keeping it safe. It's a pretty common landing area there. Yep, easy up and down as well. Myers. This is our first time seeing Corbin on the coverage. Made his way here during the second round. And he's going with the turnover route here. I like this. Just See if it's going to hold on or if it's going to flex back out. And it looks like oh. it's flexing out right there. It's going to put him past the basket a little bit. But he'll still have an easy approach to try to save this par. Off our group, Danny Moynihan. Danny Moynihan back as well was on coverage round two. Everybody testing these pads out early. You don't want to slip on the first tee here. Nice authoritative snap on that forehand. As you can see the raindrops there in the open field. Yeah, it's been raining lightly for about an hour or two before the round, so everything is nice and, and saturated. And again, they're testing the tee pads because you don't want to lose power or, or lose control of yourself while you're uh, trying to tee off, especially on the first hole. Mm -hmm. Avoiding injury, too. You know, it's the last thing you need is a final round of a major and early on on a tee pad, you injure yourself where you have to take a DNF. Corbin here trying to approach like the rest of his card. Gives it close enough. He should have a comfortable tap in from there. Mm-hmm. Ryan's dad helping him uh, locate the basket while he's in there. Really can't see much as we can't see him. Yeah, you can't stand there as a marker, but you are allowed to give guidance. You can say, hey, can you see me? All right, 30 feet left, 30 feet right. You can rattle chains to give an audible cue, and that's Ooh. a misfire there Yeah, uh, for Corbin. Uh, but you can't physically stand there. You can't place a bag there as a marker. That is not allowed. 
Yeah, I don't know if the disc being wet there affected Corbin's uh, putt, and she's not really thinking about or compensating for it, but it luckily just was a misrelease. Yeah. Tap in par there after being in the bunker, so no damage done there for Ryan. Fortunate bogey to start the final round here for Corbin. The rest of the card will tap in their pars. Hole two is a fun one. Uphill 680 foot par four. Uh, initially off the tee there, you're just trying to shape something slightly left to right, or you can hyzer flip up and more understable this to try to stay in the middle here as much as you can. Your second shot requires a ton of power, especially in wet conditions to get up towards the top of this hill to give yourself a possible look for the birdie. You can see there the scoring average at 4.39. This hole was significantly affected by the weather as that scoring average has gone up in contrast to the first two days. Well, he started that on a similar line he took the previous days, but it did not finish. It's a friendly little trickle out though. Yeah, he it looked like he trickled way out from where mm -hmm. he went in. Like he took a slide down some branches. That was that boss that he's been throwing all week. Mm -hmm. This one on Tennis. a similar line. Yeah, he's doesn't cut through a little bit. Yeah, doesn't quite get the same luck as he's going to have a little bit more difficulty in vegetation to deal with from there. Then he's just playing it in the center to the to the base of the hill. Mm -hmm. Got some decent footing there. And Corbin trying to flex something, and he is drifting over to the right as well. Turning that where, cloud breaker there. He kind of immediately looked back behind him as if maybe he lost a little bit of footing. You can see the slowdown of the run up there by Danny. He's just trying to make sure that he keeps everything center center. No need to complicate things any more than they already are with the weather being what it is. Now Ryan looks like he has a little bit of a ceiling to deal with. He also just going uphill is that the same boss that he has it is the same boss. And this is that's cranked. way to the right oh wow but it clears Dicks everything ridiculous power and ends in the circle he had a low ceiling to contend he was, with going he was out of position yeah just like that's an absurd shot to even have a look at a putt very impressive yeah most people are just pitching out to the center just to, to proceed up to to take their par but mm -hmm. Um, he wanted the press to issue. This is pushed over a little far left. Needs to get lucky and gets knocked down as it's coming into the rough there on the left-hand side for Tanner. He may have felt a little pressure there of uh, trying to chase Ryan down and make something happen. Corbin there with a good upshot. Mm -hmm. For his third, he'll have an easy drop in for four. Danny looking to skip one over towards the bullseye and yep. has done so successfully. And those are some difficult shots because you really don't know exactly where the basket is. You're just gauging from the trees and from previous knowledge where you need to be. Tanner picking something up there. See if Ryan can secure the birdie here. Oh. oh just a touch low there. So that's a uncharacteristic miss from him. Normally if he misses, it's not that that short. He kind of dribbled to be, that in, but yes. yeah. miss has been primarily right, occasional left. Yeah, haven't really seen the low miss yet, but he's fine. He's not going to lose a stroke here, even with the par. That may be a recurring theme today. Par is going to play exceptionally well in this weather. Yeah, a couple of tap ins before we close out hole two and get ready for another fun downhill shot for hole three. We're in Georgia, this is my home state. I've played here you know, all my life, and uh, it just kind of feels natural. Each tee shot out there, I feel 100% confident. That's what I'm out here to do, and I'm not stopping. And that is absolutely perfect. Too easy for Robinson. This is insane. What a wow. mud. First time major winner, Isaac Robinson. 
All right, headed into hole three, we have a 915 foot par four. You heard me correct. There is a steep, steep down here play here. To this one, you don't want to go to the right. Anything else is in bounds and in play. You just don't want to end over to the right. You get to the left, you have a, depending on your position, you'll have a look at the basket and where you need to land to try to get in the circle to secure your birdie. Ryan up top first. It looks like a different distance than what he threw day two. Mm -hmm. And he definitely threw a different Ooh, angle. He did, and it paid off for him. Yeah. That was never in any danger. It's a little surprising that this hole is playing as the second easiest. I would think it would still offer some challenge, especially with if you get out of position on the right. Not so much the left as they, these guys can recover. Yeah. But with the rain and the wind and the footing, I thought this would have played a little bit harder. Still playing just slightly under par. Well, with everyone being right hand, backhand, the typical miss is going to be over to the left. And again, once you're over there to the left, you can still approach the green and, and score and, and at least save par if needed. We've been flipping one over. I believe that's the same cloud breaker that he threw on the previous hole. I like the nice downward angle there. Again, never in any trouble. Excellent control of the angle, like you said. Never exposing it to any uh, left side wing where it would just fade out. This is a funky footing here for Danny. Yeah, yeah it's going to lose some power with that. That stance, that Captain Morgan stance with the one foot <laughs> elevated. Still got plenty of punch, and he's going to have a long look from there. Can't really ask for much more than that. And if you look from Tanner's angle here, you see it's just it's just wide open. You just yeah. got to gauge the distance right and throw the shot. This is swinging back nicely. It is, and checks yeah. up into the green. These guys have had this approach dialed in all week. Yeah. It's been fun to see. That Swing. one looks like it's swinging in, too. Is it going to check up? It does, it does, especially on wet grass. That was a nice, smooth-looking shot. It's the first mid- to long-range approach we've seen from Corbin, and that looked very, very smooth and effortless. Justice in hand here. It's become a staple for Ryan this tournament. Gets the nice movement over towards the basket. The jumper. Oh, jumper wow. Hit that. I was not expecting him to go so fast, and Danny nails it from outside the circle for the birdie. That might be an outside of circle two from where <laughs> he was at. Very well done. Oh, this was a left side miss this time. Yeah, a couple of early misfires there for Corbin. We should have a couple of birdies here from the top two on the card. Getting rolling there. Oh, some style points on that one. <laughs> that brings us to hole four, another par four. This one coming in at 580 feet. This one gives you a few more obstacles to deal with uh, off the tee there. These row of trees here can knock down your hyzer shot coming in and often do. Uh, we've seen a lot of people kind of be under these low canopies having to deal with trying to get some skip shots up here onto this green. With this being wet and compacted today, that may not be a viable option. We'll see how these guys are attacking off the tee and on their second shots. Yeah, normally some of the, the, the areas when you land are nice and dusty. Um, but when it's wet like this, they're going to end up more cakey. So they're not going to have the same type of reaction as, as something that's hard and compact or as something that's light and fluffy either. That was a, I believe it, an enforcer there. We've seen Ryan throw a, an orbit one. That's the first lucid one I've seen him throw. That one, same line from Tanner, just a little bit shorter. Yep, just slowed down by a tree just a bit. Still have a good line into the basket from over there though. I like the width of this, just needs to swing in over the top. 
Ooh, it's going to be a mm. little tight behind that tree, probably. I don't Corbin's know. taking a slightly different line. I haven't seen. I don't know if that was the intended line, but the result isn't bad. He's just going to maybe be a little pinched. But he's taken away the low canopy for the most part, being that far left. This looks really good. Oh, yeah. Up the hill. Beautiful shot. That's going to be in birdie range for sure for Tanner. Danny down to a knee trying to control the skip up. It really doesn't get mm, much skippage. Yeah. So he's still going to be slightly outside the circle looking at that uphill putt with the hill behind the basket as well. Corbin probably still going to need some kind of skip here at the end of this flight. Yep, he's going for a low skipper, yeah. and it gets eaten up. Needed to be another 10 feet to the right to get to the that dustpan there and maybe get some skip there, but that greenery just ate it up. And I have to assume from his approach angle, he did have a canopy to deal with. That's got to slow down. That's Ooh, and it's rolling too. Way down there. There it is. Oh, good bit. bit there, just over the top. Not the start Corbin was looking for, but still some golf left. Final round, plenty to play for. Oh, had the that line. was a full send too. Mm -hmm. No fear of that runaway green behind it. Ryan just pitching up, playing safe. No need to test fate anymore. And a good strong par putt there for Corbin. That one looked very confident. Tanner playing this hole beautifully, taking birdie. Looks like he's going to gain a stroke on Ryan here. Ryan taps in for his par. Yeah, that'll cut the deficit to four. And Danny taking his par as well. Moving on to hole five, a very particular angle that you have to get on this gap initially out of the green, out of the T area. Moving down the fairway, you need to keep it in the center center because if you're off to the left or right, there are trees to deflect you from getting down to the goal here, which is the green. There's this one particular tree right here that tends to block a lot of the shots that are coming in on a perfect angle, but it is a very burnable hole. Let's see if anyone can pick that up now. Tanner really getting over on Ooh. that and gets a violent kick back across the fairway and into the rough on the left. I'm wondering if that's like a really stable disc that he's trying to get a particular shape out of. It's the same disc he threw the previous round that started fading out a bit early and then got the, the good kick. So I think he was trying to make sure that he got it wider mm. of those last trees. Ryan went down, but he kind of... Threw it lower than uh, he did in previous rounds and kind of got it up into the fairway there. Danny's going to be short right. That was a de definite slip there, and it yeah. looked like a nasty one. And it's going to cost him as he's gone in very early on the right. Oh, almost made it all the way out. The last tree kicks him back in. Danny having to get creative here, patent pending. With some wet leaves, this can't be fun. Oh, he executes it well. Good turnover line. Oh, yeah. And it's going to come out of it as well. Oh, he beat the last gap. Oh, oh no boy. way. Yes. Inside of the bullseye, remarkable recovery scramble from that right side. Yes. And that is either Sasquatch or Tanner. It's got a disc, so it's got to be Tanner. Mm, you don't know. That's true. We were in the Pacific Northwest a couple weeks ago, and we did not see any Sasquatches out there, which is kind of sad. I don't know if they're endangered or if they're really good at hiding. A nice punch out as well. Fluffy little forehand that glides all the way down there. Yeah. I don't know what this that was, but it was the right choice. And they'll give him a look, too. He should have a clean up and look to the basket. He's got a window here, does Corbin, and he takes advantage of that window. It slides it to about 18 feet. 
And Ryan, not really giving out a full send, but happy to walk away with the par here. Yeah, par's been the name of the game. Just one down so far. Oh. A little high left on that bid. We've seen Tanner hit quite a few of those in round two. Corbin with his bogey putt. Looks like he's worked it out, got it back online. Tanner going to give back the stroke that he had just previously gained the hole before. As that's going to be a par drop in for Ryan. The zone is just a perfect disc for me in general. My forehand approach is one of my weapons. What I love about Discraft is I can grab a brand new zone and I know exactly how it's going to fly. For me, it just encompasses my entire approach game. All right, welcome back. Hole six, 519 foot par four. This is a tricky one as you're going uphill with a disc that's moving left to right. The hole then proceeds to bend slightly right to left. Got a little bit of a drop off here into this ravine gully area before the hole picks its way right back up to this elevated green here, which is a bit of a small turtleback runaway potential. Lots of different ways to attack this one. We see a lot of placement shots off the tee. Ryan's got an aggressive roller the first two days, and that's the same disc that he used for that, so I'm expecting to see another roller here. Definitely a roller angle. This one hits a little earlier. Ooh, it hits a tree, and that takes all the momentum out of it. So he's over there on the left. Yeah, it's hard. Once, once this disc gets... 150 feet down the fairway, you, you kind of don't know what happens to it from the tee area. So they're just assuming they're kind of thrown to where <laughs> they think it, they, that it needs to land and walking off the tee box. That had it. Oh. It just got tickled, but yeah. a, a second friendly kick puts it back towards the center. That almost looked like a roll angle, but not. That's a stable disc. It fought back out. He'll be on that right side. Tanner hmm. lining up a flex forehand. Seen this work before. That's Ooh, two that's turns. Two, yeah. Early kick back into the junk on the left. Yeah, that looks as it all. See if we can get a forehand here. That's a little too low. It's going to get eaten up by the hill. That might have worked yesterday when the, the ground was a little more compacted. Not so much today. Well, it's a and little... Then, uh, it's another slip there. Yeah. For Corbin, and that's going to drop him down on the on the down slope heading into that ravine. That's going to be some tricky footing there. At least landing where he landed, he will have an opening to attack the green and not have to navigate too many trees to get there. Ryan throwing a, a, a forehand out there. It didn't flex out like I think he expected it to, and he's back into the gully here. Tanner punching back out and gets to the top there. We'll have a, a scary look uh, at a putt. Corbin using all the airspace that was available to him to get something Ooh. up there towards the basket. That was nicely done. You really pushed the boundaries on that left side. Mm -hmm. Forehand coming from Danny. I was about to say, I don't even know where Danny's at. <laughs> nice pace on that forehand to get him out there with the basket. This will be the third here for Ryan. Just trying to give himself a look at a par. Really kind of measuring the options out. Looks like he's trying to give it that like half floaty jump bid. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Damn, oh, Tanner full bore again. You have to. It's the final round. Yeah. And he's just been off on these last two. Putt starting to drop again nicely here for Corbin. As he picks up the par. Danny tapping in his par as well. And Ryan doing the same. Oh, 
Tanner's having a rough go with it here, taking a bogey on this hole. Yeah, that brings him back to even overall over on the day. Hole seven is a 667 foot par four. Very picturesque opening that you have to play through. You don't want to be down here in the valley of this hill. You want to be on the top of it to be able to approach the green. And you have to be very particular about your landing area so that on your approach shot, you can get on the on this back of the turtle back and actually stay there. About middle of the order in terms of difficulty at 0.28 strokes mm. over par. I'm looking at that tee pad and it looks... It's uh, not good. Yeah. It is not good. It's probably one of the more slick ones out here right now, and that's a slip. But he still gets it online. As you can see, the rain is picking up quite a bit here at this stretch of the course, and that's a very fortunate break. Mm -hmm. Puts him right in the landing area that he needs to be in to attack. A little bit of a slip there as every single one of these guys went up there and just repeatedly checked their footing on this pad. And they're like, yeah, it's not good. Yeah. It's just there's no spot where it wasn't slick. I mean, if you can see it on camera, that is how it looks. That's that was a still slip. Was a slip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three for three. But gets a great result. Wow. Yeah. Can so that, that ended up making him release early. He got a little vegetation Five. action there, but it still fought out. All the way up to where he just about where he needs to be. Tanner spun out a bit there as well, so when they walked away, they're like, "All right, four for four on slips." I wanted no part of the tee pad, so I went to the left of it, going down that hill. <laughs> All right, Danny can see the basket. He's flirting with the right side. Get left, and it flirted back, put him in the middle. Looks like Corbin's lining up a forehand. That's oh, he low. didn't like it out of his hand. Yeah, too low. Yeah. Tanner also going with a forehand. Oh, I almost thought it got through. Mm -hmm. One of these last limbs just knocked it right down. Yeah. Oh, this is wide open here. Justice in hand. We've seen Ryan kind of eat up these approaches all week. I would expect him to put this pretty close. Good job, yeah, and he's done yeah. so. He's played very consistent golf. If you guys have watched all three of these rounds, he's he's been very good at limiting mistakes. And when he does make the mistakes, he's got the skill set to be able to scramble and recover. Much like you see uh, from some of the pros uh, that we cover, just when you make the mistake, it doesn't automatically equal bogey. They find a way to scramble and save a par, and he's been doing that all week. I will have to give a little bit of the credit to uh, Phil Ryan, dad. That's what I call him. That's his whole name is yeah. Phil Ryan's dad. <laughs> <laughs> so his name is Phil. But just having someone to, to ground you a little bit, especially being younger, yeah, definitely makes a difference. You, you tend to forget, like, he's only 15. Yeah. Like he's, he plays so so far above his age uh, in terms of skill and demeanor as he gets a birdie here on hole seven. Uh, it's just fun to watch. Some face say fun, some say scary. <laughs> well, we don't have to play against him, but, <laughs> yeah, I, I would venture to say in a couple of years, maybe even sooner, he's going to be a real problem for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> He probably already is, or yeah. whatever it is he plays in. <laughs> Hole 8, par 4, 500 feet. This one is definitely a two-shot par 4. Coming out of this gap here at a low ceiling, you want your disc to be moving over to the left-hand side if you can get as close to this tree as you can without being in it. On the left-hand side, it opens up your secondary angle of attack here as you can throw a turnover or a soft forehand That'll skip its way up towards the screen here. There is an out-of-bounds road behind the basket, though, but it really doesn't come into play. It's all about executing this first shot to start here. Ooh. Oh. Dude, he's over by the short pad. Clipping that clothesline limb. So we were just talking about scrambling, so we're going to have to see what he yeah. does there. 
This comes out nice, but it stayed on the right side. You definitely want to be more left side of the fairway once you make it outside this initial gap. It was almost a carbon copy of Danny's drive yesterday. This is pushing a bit too straight as well. Yep, and that is in the tall grass. It's going to limit the options on the second shot. That looks like it's going to move over there to the left. Beautifully and done. Yes, that is perfect. Mm -hmm. Tanner pure this yesterday, uh, and even better today. Um, is he lining up to the... He's going to the right of this big tree, which is terrifying yeah. um but placing out a big hyzer there and starting to finish back around doesn't quite get all the way through oh well, you might be close enough to have a look risky play this one over the top for danny and finishing out to the left and getting a little bit of a rollback he went that big anheuser over the top angle that left to right Corbin found a little gap here to take with his forehand and skips it up. I think he should be just inside the circle or at circle's edge. Mm -hmm. And this is the wide open look that you want. Ten. Just to be able to pitch it up there to oh, the basket. Yeah. Beautiful shot. Stress-free putt. Relatively speaking, with the with the rain, no, nothing's really stress-free. Well, I can say this. At least it's not rainy and extremely windy. That's true. Pretty mild breeze throughout the day. Mm -hmm. This for par. No, I'm sorry, for birdie. As you can see, is quite a ways out with them. A bit of obstruction to deal with. Has a window. Oh, wow. Just push past it on the right. Good effort, though. Yeah. I thought he had a ceiling and a floor to deal with, but he, he managed both of them well. Corbin uphill just a pace, maybe inside the circle. Centers the putt. Oh, wow. That basket did not clock in the work today. Uh, I don't know what to say about that one. That's the first that was, one we've seen like that yeah. in this event. Center, center. We did have a that kind of wonky one yesterday with Tanner where it, kind of, it looked like it hit the bottom and bounced back out. Yeah. Which was this exact basket. Uh, mm. But that one was just center all the way. That's yeah. unfortunate. Don't want to gloss over the fact that Tanner getting a beautiful birdie there on hole eight. Put himself back under, under par. Mm-hmm. Hole 9, 472 foot par 3. You want to play out of this gap. Get past this bunker. Try to avoid the bunker that's over here on the right and see if you can't get something that squeaks in under the canopy and lands inside the circle. The basket is on a hill. It does have a slight slope in front with a steeper one in back. So it's not that much of a give me, although it is playing close to par we've seen this hole have a bit of a vortex over the first couple days where everything's getting pulled to the right tanner stabling up a little bit better this time and yeah. keeps it in line he's gonna have a look there for the birdie this is that mind bender i i don't love it mm. it's Looks drifting, like it's drifting right. over to right again he was trying to decide between a felon and the mind bender, and he chose that one. And Dad was like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> he had almost forgotten that the danger or the place that you can't miss is right <laughs> on this hole, uh, as we see Danny heading over that way as well. Every time Corbin throws it, almost looks like he's he's slipping. Yeah, I he, wonder. He's managing it fine. I, Ooh, nothing, that's, nothing wrong with that. I think that's the best one that we've seen with three rounds. It absolutely is. Yeah, I don't know if it's footwear uh, necessarily is giving him issues on these tee pads. Maybe it wasn't an issue the first two days. Yeah. A little 
float. That's a cool looking disc in the air. As it just floats on by and leaves them a little bit of a tester. It's going to mm -hmm. be maybe just outside the circle. I think it's right at the circle's edge, right inside of the paint, it looks like. Floaty Anheuser approach there for Ryan. Executed very nicely. And, and again. That, according to Udis, his, his scramble stats are ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Although we're not using Udis, but if we were. Yeah. That's a jump putt. So oh, he was yeah. outside the circle there, and he nails it for the par. Birdie look here. Oh. oh that's, that's one you want back. I know yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I know that feeling all too well. Touch too low. And I want to say that's probably the first low one that I've seen out of Tanner. I think he's hit the... That was a committed putt. He hit, the, he hit it with commitment, but it was just too low. Um, and that's the first birdie that we've seen on lead card all week on this oh, yeah, hole it is. for Corbin. Well done. Hole nine, not giving up many birdies throughout the week. Well, that wraps up the front half here as you see the front half results through nine. Ryan holding on to a six stroke lead as we get ready to make the turn. We're just nine holes away from crowning a new United States Amateur Champion. Make sure you check on back for the back nine as we crown a major winner.